Welcome back, Great 10. It is nice to begin on a new note like this in the Google Classroom. So this is also a classroom for us. We are in the classroom now. So I'm happy that we are progressing day by day, becoming more and more tech savvy, technology expert. So this period, this quarantine period, is teaching us a number of things and that not that are not negative ones that are very positive and that is going to really help us out come whatever may in future google classroom i did not know before i do not know about you whether you have already used it but i am becoming quite a learner now because i want to learn and learn more about technology to bring the best to you if you are submitting your assignments on time, this is no more a piece of paper for me. This becomes life itself for me. This becomes you yourself for me. And that is why the moment the whole class submits the assignments and you people are regular in submission, that very moment my teaching takes life from you all, from the assignments. So keep submitting your assignments, upload them on this classroom mode, whatever options are there, please upload the, uh, please upload the assignments so that we are able to grade you and we are, whenever the assignment is ungraded, once you are submitting, it will show green. So please upload the assignments once your name goes green, that means you are present and you'll be marked present. I cannot do anything anymore. If you are not green or rather if, you are if your name is not green, then you'll be marked absent. So please continue submitting your assignments, uploading your assignments on time. All right. So we begin with the poem. The Dust of Snow by Robert Frost. Come, join me. The way a crow, a crow, a, the way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rude. I do not know whether you're carrying your books with you. But if you are still without the books, please do get your books because books help us to connect with our learning. There is no replacement for books, right? There is no replacement for your teacher. Online medium will be there. But you need your teacher, you need your books to feel more connected with your learning, right? So get your books. If you are not getting your books, download the poem. Once again, I am going through the lines. The way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rude. That's the point. Right. Coming to the explanation. Dust of snow is only eight lines long. It takes hardly 15 seconds to 20 seconds to read the poem. But children, you will spend hours when you understand or when you try to understand the deep inner meaning of the poem. It is the simplest of all his short poems, right? Now the message or the main themes of the poem. Conver uh, we have a communication or we have a conversation here that tells us, that connects nature and humans together. The poet is trying to converse his feelings with us sharing that nature and man when they come together 
what happens? What happens, children? It is sheer ecstasy, sheer happiness when nature and human come together. We have completely gone against nature. We do not know how to come close to nature. And that is why today nature is taking its own revenge against us. Right? But when nature and man are together, that is the most powerful, most happiest moment of the world. Nature is healing. This is the first point. The communication or the connectivity between nature and humans. This is the most important, most important point that is shared here. Nature is healing. Nature is always healing. And it always, you know, it tries to make our negative feelings die down. Nature tries to remove our pains. Nature tries to remove our tears. Nature tries to heal all the moments of suffering. So this is the second point. First point is communication between nature and man. Bringing nature and man close. The second point or the second theme is nature is a powerful healer. Healer means... The nature takes care. It makes you forgive. It makes you forget. It makes you strong and stronger. Beautiful from within. Right? The third point I am about to share. The significance of small daily things that are going on around us in nature. A bird is flying in the sky. Common. Every day it happens. A water droplet or a dew, dew drop on the petal of a flower. Common. It happens. Right? A leaf falling from a tree. Nothing matters. We have started taking nature for granted. So these small moments, they do not hold any significance to us anymore. How many of us run out in the rain? When rain falls, let me run out and go wet and get wet. How many of us do? Getting wet in the rain. Parents are there to pull us inside. Our health, maybe after the rains, after we get wet, will not be good. We might suffer from some kind of health issues. So nature and man are a bit, you know, are a bit different from each other. They are not very close, are a bit apart. But when they are close, they are miracle. They are a blessing together. Published in 1923, this poem positions. I am going to give you a new word, juxtaposes, J U X. T A P O S E S juxtaposes. It means brings together positions. J U X T A P O S E S juxtaposes two fundamentals. What is that? It positions two fundamentals. Human complexity. We are very complex children. Humans are very, very complicated beings. Very complicated. And, and, animal simplicity. Look at the oxymoron. Human complexity and animal simplicity. When two ideas are expressed together, two opposite ideas are expressed together, they are known as oxymoron. Literary device, remember? So here, the poet juxtaposes a beautiful oxymoron. Human complexity and animal simplicity. Come, let's continue. 
The poem is set in a scene where the poet is in a very bad mood, right? And is walking by a tree, right? Hemlock tree. There is the speaker, the man under the tree. The man is under the tree, right? It's probably winter and there is snow on the tree. A crow is sitting high up on the tree and suddenly he shook himself and some dust of snow fell down, showered down on the poet. Where it had fallen down, we do not know. Maybe on the shoulders, maybe on the head, maybe on the body, wherever it is. The crow had shaken some powdery snow, dust of snow on the poet. I am repeating the first stanza. The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. The crow was sitting high up on the hemlock tree, right? Hemlock tree is actually a poisonous tree with small white flowers. It is a poisonous tree, right? Now, whether it is falling on his head or shoulders, whatever, there is no mention in the poem. Neither there is any mention about the bird's specific action. What do I mean? What do I mean? The bird might have landed at that time, might have come and sat at that time. It might have been the bird was already sitting there and suddenly he shook himself. Or he might have shivered in cold and the dust of snow fell down. So we neither have any idea where the snow had fallen or where the dust of snow had fallen. Neither we have any idea why did the birdie behave like that. Here, the two agents of nature, the crow and the hemlock tree, mind it, these two agents signify dullness, gloomy picture that we find in the opening stanza of the poem. The same gloomy picture we find in the poet's mind also. The poet is unhappy about something and the poet takes a walk in the nature to forget that thing. When we are unhappy, we run out and we would love to be with the nature that time. Wherever we might go, we want to go, we might go and enjoy some quiet moments with nature when we are sad. Right? Coming to the second stanza. I believe you are following. Has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rude. Now, for reasons unknown, we don't know why the poet was having a terrible day. But the falling of the snow powder or the snow dust on him lifted his moods instantly. Supposing you are under a tree, I am under a tree and something falls, a leaf falls down. Suddenly at that moment, we will look up and maybe we will be suddenly cheerful. The same thing happened with the poet when the dust of snow fell down. The poet also felt suddenly very cheerful, very happy seeing the snowflakes on him. The powdery snowflakes on him. Right. And he had spent already half his day in a bad mood. In a very bad mood he had spent half his day. But that snow falling on him, the dust of snow on him, 
cheered his mood, made him feel good, and the rest of the day was not spoiled. It saved the rest of the day from getting spoiled. What saved the dust of snow? The dust of snow saved the poet's day from getting spoiled. And who are the main characters behind this dust of snow? The crow and the hemlock tree. Children, generally, crow and hemlock tree are often used to describe negative feelings. They are always carrying negative images. Hemlock tree is a poisonous tree and crow is a dark black bird. So they symbolize negative images, right? But these negative images have been wonderfully used, very, very magically used to bring out a different life, a positive life inside the poet, a different cheer inside the poet so that the poet's rest of the day is saved and is feeling, poet is feeling happy once more. Why should I spoil my day? Let me be happy. So happiness is sometimes depending on very small things of nature. So do not overlook, do not ignore the small things happening in nature around you. What is the meaning of rude? R-U-E-D. Rude means spoiled. I had spoiled half my day, but the scroll and the hemlock tree, they saved me from spoiling the other half of the day. And I'm happy. What was the small thing? The dust of snow. Children, that is the end of the poem. I would like to share the rhyme scheme here. The rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. How it is happening? I have already explained rhyme scheme in my last class. The way a crow, A, C, R, O, W, crow, A, shook down on me, M, E, let us make it be. The dust of snow, snow and crow, A, A, from a hemlock tree, B, B, right? has given my heart, H-E-A-R-T-C, a change of mood, D, and saved some part, heart and part are rhyming together. So C will be C-D and saved some part, C again, or of a day I had root. C-D, C-D. So A-B, A-B, C-D, C-D, right? So that is what the poem is all about. Simple meanings are there. I'll be uploading the word meanings, the NCRT questions you people are required to solve as your assignment. And CBSE questions, you leave it for your ma'am. Please solve the assignments, right? Upload, your attendance has to be regular and your lessons will become livelier. Right? That is all for today. Take care. Love you.